In this video, we pursue one very important goal with one even more important consequence. Namely, I will show you how to express an arbitrary vector in the plane as a linear combination of an arbitrary pair of vectors a and b, as long as a and b don't lie on the same line. They must point in different directions. And the consequence of that will be that two such vectors span the entire plane. In other words, any vector in the plane can be expressed as a linear combination of these two vectors. So the main takeaway is that for the plane, two vectors is enough to express all other vectors by linear combinations, as long as the two vectors we're working with are pointing in different directions. So, how are we going to do it in this case, for this particular vector v? Well, it's not so easy. It's not so easy because the vectors a and b are not arranged in any special way. In particular, they don't form a 90 degree angle. So I would say that in this case, it's nearly impossible to simply guess the right coefficients. We must be much more systematic. So here's how we're going to do it. Instead of going after the vector v, we will try to identify all the vectors in the plane that are easy to decompose with respect to a and b. And once we have identified enough of those, a way to determine the coefficients for the vector v will actually present itself. So where are we going to start? Well, here's a good place to start. If we had to decompose this vector right here, we would easily say, I'm not drawing the vector itself, I'm only drawing its tip. So if we had to represent this vector right here, let me draw it a little bit more accurately, we would say it's a plus b, one of a and one of b. So it's a good start, but we have to be even more systematic. So what we're going to do now is try to find all the vectors whose first coefficient, whose coefficient for the vector a equals one. Let's put that in, one. So let's constrain ourself, ourselves to this coefficient being one. And the second coefficient can have different values. Let's try a few of those values. So if the second coefficient is zero, we're just looking at 1a, and we're right here. If we now take this coefficient equal to one, we will be right at a plus b, right here. And this should remind you of an exercise we did before. It's exactly like it. So you probably already know the answer. You know what I'm going to end up with if I fix this coefficient and try all possible values for this coefficient. But let's rediscover it anyway. So now let me take this coefficient equal to two. And we have a plus two b. So we're right here. a plus three b and so forth. Now let's try a few negative numbers. When this coefficient equals minus one, we're right here. When coefficient equals minus two, we're right here. And we see exactly what's going on. What we're looking at is a straight line that passes through the tip of A. And all of these vectors whose tips fall on this line share the property that the first coefficient is one. So we're going to draw it like this. I'm actually going to draw this line so it's parallel to the vector B and passes through A. And I know this picture would get quite messy if I'm not careful. So this isn't perfect, but I think it's pretty good, okay? So we're now going to label this line. We're going to call it the alpha equals one line. All the vectors whose tips fall on this line have the coefficient alpha equals one. So Actually, we now see that v, the coefficient alpha for v, is approximately one, maybe a little bit greater than one. So we're moving in the right direction. So for all the vectors whose tip fall in this line, at least one of the coefficients is easy to determine. The first one, it equals one. Okay, so we're done with that. Now let's set it to two. And when beta, the second coefficient is zero, we're right here at 2a. Let's be careful, we're right here at 2a. And here we go. When, when alpha is 2 and beta is 0, we're right here. If alpha is 2 and beta is 1, we're right here. Beta equals 2 is right here. 
theta equals negative 1 is right here, and we see exactly what's going on. We're looking at a straight line, once again parallel to the vector b, that now passes through the tip of 2a. So there you go, let me draw this straight line, let me erase these points and just draw the line as carefully as I can. It has to be parallel to the original line and be exactly this far away from it. And now we're going to label this line as well and of course it's alpha equals 2. And similarly alpha equals 3, it may or may not fit on the screen, I think it just barely will, will pass through this point right here and will also be parallel to the vector b. So here we go, alpha equals 3. So all of the vectors whose tips fall on this line have the first coefficient alpha equal to 3. What about alpha equals 0? Well, we would start right here, and it's a line that's once again parallel to b, in fact it coincides with b, that passes through the origin. So let me now draw this line very carefully. And this, of course, is alpha equals 0. And we can continue. Now we're going to go after negative values of alpha. Alpha equals negative 1. Which line will it be? Try to determine it on your own. And now I will draw it. So we have to take minus a. Now we're looking at alpha equals negative 1. So it will go through this point right here and be parallel to all of these other lines. Let's see if I can do it all right. All right, here we go. And this is alpha equals minus 1. And so forth. And so on and so forth. So we're halfway done with drawing what will end up being a grid. So now let's do the exact same kind of construction, but for the second coefficient. And we can go much faster than we just did. We will now consider all the vectors whose second coefficient, let me fix this up just a little bit, whose second coefficient equals 1. So now we know how to do it. You should pause the video and draw the line before I do it. And here we go. It will go through the tip of the vector b now. And it will now be parallel to the vector a. So here we go. Here's the line. And all the vectors whose tips fall on this line have beta equal 1. So let me write it right here. Have beta equal 1. So we already have a bunch of vectors for which we know all of the coefficients. So for example, this one lies on alpha equals 2, beta equals 1. So this, the vector whose tip is at this point, has coefficients 2, 1. So we already have a lot of vectors within the set of vectors for which we know the coefficients. Now let me fix this again. <laughs> All right. Now let's go after beta equals 2. So you know exactly what to do. It will go through here and it will be parallel to this line once again. And now you can see a grid forming. So it's almost like a Cartesian grid, but it is skewed. And a skewed Cartesian grid, so it's no longer Cartesian, it's a skewed grid, has a very nice name in mathematics. It's called the affine grid or an affine grid. Affine, very good word. It just means skewed like this and equally spaced in one di direction and equally spaced in the other direction, but not necessarily equally spaced among the, between the directions. Okay, so this right here is beta equals 2. Let's now go after beta equals 0. And it will, of course, be this line right here that coincides with the vector a. And now, so this is beta equals zero. How about beta equals negative one? Well, it will go through right here and be once again parallel to the vector a. Let's be careful here. Okay, so before I consider beta equals negative two, I want you to realize that as long as your vector that you need to decompose falls within this grid, you can very accurately determine its coefficient. For example, without looking, let me pick a spot. So here we go. So for the vector whose tip ends right here, 
So it starts here and ends right here. Let me draw it, might as well draw it. If I can, all right, so I missed this point. So we're going to do this vector instead. So it's alpha coefficient is between two and three and closer to two than it is to three. So I think two and a quarter is a very good guess. And it's right between beta equals one and beta equals two. So it's one and a half. So the coefficients of this vector, which would have been very difficult to identify without this grid, is now relatively easy to identify. And we can do it with relatively good accuracy. And once again, we have two and a quarter and one and a half. But our vector v still doesn't fall within this grid. So we're still not able to do it for the vector v. So we just have to keep drawing these coordinate lines. It's a very good word to call them until the vector v is captured. So here we go. Let's go now for beta equals negative two and that will actually trap our vector v. All right, let's once again do it as carefully as we possibly can. That's not it. All right, that's not bad. And here we go. This is beta equals negative two. And now the vector V is trapped. And notice what happened. Before, I frankly had no idea what the coefficients of the vector V were. I couldn't even give you an approximate answer, except to tell you that one of the coefficients has to be negative. Because if both coefficients are positive, it would be somewhere in this quadrant. So that's all I could tell you before, but now I can tell you the coefficients of the vector v pretty accurately. As far as alpha is concerned, it's between zero and one. It seems to be closer to one. So I'm going to call it three quarters. And as far as beta is concerned, it's almost on the beta equals negative two line. So I'm going to say negative 1.9. So three quarters. So using decimal notation, we're at point 75 and negative, how we're we going to do this, put parentheses, negative 1.9. And we have accomplished our goal. So what I have presented here is actually a robust way for determining coefficients for any vector v in the plane with respect to an arbitrary pair of vectors. In practice, it's difficult to do this accurately and neatly and maybe in practice it's not such a perfect way, but conceptually it works. And more importantly, it shows that any vector can be decomposed with respect to A and B that don't point along the same line, uh, at least theoretically. So let me, for as a conclusion to this video, uh, state the consequence of what we did here. The consequence is that any two vectors in the plane that don't point in the same direction span the entire plane. In other words, any vector in the plane can be expressed as a linear combination of those two vectors.